So this story is breaking right now with the new set coming to the TCG pretty soon. Supreme Darkness, that's the next core set. We have some photos from Japan that are definitely worrying to probably vendors, but also players. I would say, and I'll get back to that in the end, that this is actually pleasing to me. And there's a good reason for that. This is the tweet that sparked up the entire conversation from Yuvik Yu-Gi-Oh! and translated by Twitter it says, Yu-Gi-Oh! Supreme Darkness, it doesn't sell at all. You can see it right here. There's only one thing to do. It's on sale for a super special price, 20% off. Anyway, by loss, the Yu-Gi-Oh! representative is like this too. People are just, you know, bowing down in Japanese culture, saying, please buy my product. You can see the entire box of cases. Now, even though it's a little bit funny, it is not funny at all. Um, Konami is responsible to releasing good products that vendors make their living off of. Especially in Japan, there is so much competition in the TCG space that, you know, they are required to make a good enough product so it can sell and support businesses. And this is the same here in the West, by the way. Vendors live off of these products and they need to be good. If a product is not good, for example, Legacy of Destruction was a good example of that, very low rarities then vendors don't buy the product and they don't manage to sell because you know there's no value in getting boxes and this is why when you see good cards as secret rares you are obviously upset because they will be a little bit more expensive but it means that the set holds value and it can be sold we'll get to why this is not selling but this is the entire um conversation here but but even before that there's another set coming very soon which is called quarter century bonanza and konami has been dropping bombs all week um even like two weeks they're doing a good job in marketing this set because they are dropping releases onto twitter images of these nostalgic pool of cards 200 cards that are going to be one per pack that are going to be either in qcr or quarter century um the platinum secret rare and people are pretty happy this is time wizard exclusive reprints you can see now they announced this yesterday the monarchs and it's pretty cool. A lot of cards that needed a reprint are now seeing a reprint in the set. So Konami has another backup of a pretty solid set that is coming soon, even before Supreme Darkness. And this is even titled as the set code RA03, which is for them, it's Rarity Collection 3. If you think about the Japanese card game, the OCG, they've only, only released four Rarity Collections across many, many years because they started this even, I think, 10 years ago or at least five years ago. But Konami has released three in the span of one year because they know they can milk this product and people buy it in like, you know, hordes. We also got some reveals of other cards in this nostalgia card pool. Sky Striker is nostalgic. I'm going to feel a little bit old, but polymerization is there as well. Back to Supreme Darkness. Why is the set not selling? The release date for us is going to be January, so it's a little bit more down the line. There is Bonanza before that, but there's also Crossover Breakers, which is a deck building set that is going to release very, very solid archetypes out of the gate that are seeing competitive success in the OCG from wave one, one of support. The deck building sets are those sets where the rares are the commons, right? And uh, with collector rares. And they always release three new archetypes into the game and some support cards and reprints around that. But usually, if you take a look at Amazing Defenders, it's a set that has aged amazingly. What was released there? Pearly Rescue Ace and Mechanico. Wave one, none of these decks were remotely playable. Like these decks were absolutely unplayable think about rescue ace pearly and mechanico now each of these decks wins a ycs a little bit down the line because they get custom support but in crossover breakers it's not going to happen because starting in wave one malice and riseal are competitive right of the gate let's not talk about that let's talk about supreme darkness what is in here this is obviously a evil hero themed pack that has support for evil heroes speed roids Crystrons and a new archetype called Argos. I'm just gonna call it Argos even though it has a star. And it's time to look at like, why is this set not selling? If you think about the latest sets with Infinite Forbidden, think about Info with the Fiendsmith engine, think about Legacy of Destruction with Tenpai, think about Rage of the Abyss, which is a huge set 
um, with, of course, Azamina and, of course, Malcharmies, good ones. Those sell like crazy. Good Stables, Dominus Impulse, Dominus Purge. Those are sets that just sell and they're all going to be secret rares, those good cards. That's what makes the sets sell. I know that people don't like it because it means that the cards are going to be very expensive. However, because of that, you are able to have a set that holds a lot of value. But Supreme Darkness, and the reason why I said I'm happy about it in the beginning is because we're not seeing another level of power creep in the set. The set is actually lower power level, which is good because do we want to continue upping the, the power level of the deck, of, of decks and cards? It's, it's crazy. It's getting crazy. Let's take a look at what's in the set and understand why it's not selling. So there's Arcana for support which is not going to be playable whatsoever. There's the new Argos archetype, which looks to me extremely unplayable. It's an archetype that revolves around summoning trap cards, similar to what Silhouette Hat Rabbit does. And it's like a little bit convoluted. It's not really sure whether this is going to see support or success or anything like that. This card is huge. Probably the best card in the set. Azamina and the Sinful Spoil storyline get more support, but it's basically only this card that matters. Other cards are more like flavor and Crystron, nobody cares about that there's some support cards evil heroes that are doing nothing glad beasts that maybe are going to be a little bit interesting other support card halloween a new mulcharmy which is not going to be super playable because it's going to be like a graveyard mulcharmy another primite wave of support which again the archetype is kind of limping right now and the speedroid stuff which nobody asked for to be honest now in terms of stable cards there's really nothing here for anyone, right? There's basically not the Dominus Impulse level of staple that we're used to seeing in recent sets. There are, of course, some Diabelle cards and stuff like that. Crystron, there's another wave supporter, Fiendsmith, which is going to be, like, dead by the time it arrives here. It's already dead limited in the, uh, in the OCG. And another very good card is this card. This card is incredible. This is basically the Promethean Princess for light and darks incredible card i expect that this card and the new azamina cards i'm gonna make a video about the azamina stuff so stick around are gonna do really really well but besides that the set doesn't look extremely promising basically kind of like convoluted support of archetypes that nobody really wanted and besides you you can have support for decks that nobody plays or support that is not gonna make decks competitive but you need to have some sort of value to hold the set together. So there's not like a Dominus card here. There's no like important staple. I think this and this are probably or, are what gonna hold the set together, but nothing else here is really desirable. I think Evil Hero is of course a fan favorite. Glad Beast is a very like huge fan favorite. People are clamoring about this, but the fact is that it's not gonna sell a lot probably. And again, it's a good thing because no power creep, but on the other hand, vendors are suffering because of it. Now, another quick note about Konami making moves. It's not all bad. Update on the Blue Eyes deck, if you haven't heard, there's going to be QCRs, like Chase QCRs in the structure deck for the first time ever. The Blue Eyes one that is going to be releasing in February. During engineering, we reconfigured to squeeze in another extra secret rare per pack. So, plus one secret rare per deck, and it's that card that can be upgraded to quarter century, not the ultra. So you're gonna be getting three ultras in the structure, I believe, one of them can be a secret rare, and then that secret rare can be upgraded to a quarter century. So you're not gonna be buying only three structure decks because they're all the same, because they're not gonna be all the same. And this is good, this is good for people who wanna, you know, chase rarities, and you know look for and of course for vendors because people are going to buy more structures so supreme darkness is looking uh, kind of iffy right now over in the ocg wondering what you guys think about this set of course like every other set we are going to do a should you buy video it's just a little bit longer to wait but um stick around for crossover breakers because this is going to be a very important one thank you so much for watching and listening like the video subscribe i will see you in the next one peace